Thank you for staying with us. Thank you. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Niger Delta communities threaten to cripple oil production over Kano's continuous detention. Communities in the Niger Delta state have threatened to halt oil production if the federal government does not release Namdi Kanu, the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB. Kanu has been in solitary confinement at the DSS um, headquarters in Abuja since his extraordinary rendition from Kenya in June 2021, despite appeals and court orders for his release. The Association of Niger Delta Upland Communities, through its president, Isa Mohamed Obiri, and Secretary Wisdom Otei, demanded a political solution to Kanu's detention and warned of actions to cripple oil production. They issued a 14-day ultimatum, threatening to keep the Rumukpe manifold, which stores 700,000 barrels of crude oil per day, non-operational until Kanu is released. This shutdown has led to significant financial losses for the federal government, estimated at 14.5 trillion naira over the past eight months. The communities criticized the marginalization of the Igbo Biafran people and the injustice towards Kanu, stating that those behind his rendition are the true adversaries of Nigeria. They called on all citizens to use natural resources to protect Kanu until he is free. Now, joining us um, to discuss this is Dr. Martin Morgan. He's a public affairs analyst and is on the phone with us. And also, Comrade Bedford Berefa is the Ijo Youth Council Worldwide spokesperson. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so um, Comrade Bedford, let's start with you. I mean, we've, we've known that Namdi Kanu has been arrested and detained for a while now, but with this latest development of some communities saying that they are going to um, halt the oil production and make sure that, you know, we just don't have that in Nigeria, what is your take on it? Well, um, sorry uh, to um, note that... Um, in Nabi Kanu is still in solidarity uh, confinement. Yes, there are requests for political solution is 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 not out of place. It is their right to uh, to advocate, you know, for the release of Nam de Kanu, owing to the fact that um, um, there are court orders, you know, and that that, that that were being flaunted. However, they don't have that locus to now say they want to cripple uh, oil production in the Niger Delta. They are not occupants of the Niger Delta. He, he, uh, I hope it's not a Niger Delta uh, issue. So they shouldn't uh, correlate if they're advocating for the release of Nadoka. They should do that. You know, after they've been doing sit at home and they've done all of all of that to, you know, to express their grievances. Now coming to now generalize and now say Niger Delta uh, uh, oil block will be shut down, you know, for reasons based on it. It's, it's, it's totally unacceptable. That we, uh, the the Joint Council is dissociated uh, totally from such a uh, compression. It is not uh, in the interest of the region, and therefore they should stop making such assertions. You know, and, and, and you know, deal with the issues politically. I believe the North South East they have political uh, uh, big wits. They have politicians. This is a new government. This is tenable led administration. They should have uh, political, uh, you know, uh, foundations to negotiate the release of Nandi Kanu and stop uh, making assertions, generalizing, uh, committing fallacies and fallacious statements. You know, just to incite, you know, unnecessary violence in the Nigeria Delta. It is totally unacceptable. They should rephrase. You know their uh, their agitation and and stop um, uh, putting um, uh, the Niger Delta into bad light because this is totally not a, an agreement for the Niger Delta uh, region. The Trade Council cannot watch on their watch and, and see and such a, a useless and such baseless you know uh, threats you know to old street they should be mindful of what they say if they are agitating for their uh, counterparts or for their leader to release fair to them we too we have had fair shares of arrest uh, our president former president to join guns who has had has been arrested several even dr felix todola was arrested at several points in time we never you know we all we held our, our grounds and, and fought for what we believe was right yes if you are saying marginalization in niger delta is our collective agitation but don't now uh, associate ipop with the niger delta struggle it is totally unacceptable all right, Dr. Martin, do you, um, do you share the same sentiments with Comrade Bedford? Yes, uh, I think uh, we need to separate these things very well. Mm. The Niger Delta approach 
is originally out of the Igbo territory. Because you have to look, if you talk about the Niger Delta, originally we are talking about Igbo, uh, Edo Delta, Bayesa, Cross River, Akwaibum, and um, I think, yes. So if you are not talking and not associating uh, the people of Niger Delta with this type of threat, to me, I think it's not very much acceptable. Rather, what they should do, they should be able to say, fine, if you want to buy some sensibilities and some sentiments as related to Mr. Nam de Kalu, you should have been in another way or say, fine, let the other various stakeholders we meet. They have a representation in the various in the state uh, in the state and the federal system. So this is what we do best. Having that coloration to the Niger Delta that if not, then can we hold up or all those storage facilities. For me, I think there are more problems in the Niger Delta that we don't want to have more polemics as related on a political ground. For me, I think this is just a job approach. A job approach in the sense that uh, maybe some spiritual group want to just uh, manage and make themselves relevant into, into the polity. But they shouldn't use on the fridge of Mr. Nam Kanu. A release or not, and giving the federal government a threat, and which is not acceptable. So for me, we should be able to separate that major data issue from the release. Yes, it's very good that Mr. Akano should be released. It's a, a, a form of agitations and whatever, which is right. That's why it was incarcerated. I know that the federal government, their own sensibility, they are working into an integration of a peaceful uh, resolution. So if you are working toward that uh, intervention of a peaceful resolution, coming up with a threat, at this bottom line, at this bottom time, now it's not even acceptable because there's no crisis already bewailing the Niger Delta. The flood is coming. We are not talking about that. The, the, the ecological problems are all over there. So we should not associate again or more or rest to that. That is my own approach to that. Niger Delta should be solely separated from the iPod approach. Well, but do you think, uh, on the national basis now, do you think that Nam Kanu's case is a case for the Southeast that they should face their music alone? Uh, if Niger Delta, in solidarity, wants to lend their voice to that, don't you think it's a good thing? For me, it's a question for me. Can I? Both of you. Let me start with uh, can I, can I? Dr. Martins. Yes, go on. Yes, for me, if there's any solidarity interest of or uh, a, a, a solidarity to a, a speech as related that should have been done with the stakeholders of the niger delta territory and say this is what we wish that by collaboration and association or nearness to whatever we are agitating this is what but it shouldn't just come up like that and give a threat to the federal government and each threat should be treated seriously on a security platform but for me i think it should not be solely associated to that if there's any other approach meet up the representatives of the various states in the House of uh, Senate and uh, Assembly and say, because this is what we want to do. And then there will be a peaceful means. I believe in dialogue, not to just come and take the country up, because we have already a lot of problems. There's ecocide in Niger Delta, which is, uh, is, a, fam a, a, an issue, is a term used that already our ecosystem there is under suicide. There, People cannot farm, people cannot fish, people cannot do anything. So we should not come and associate and use it as a cheap of, uh, publicity to say that the communities of the Niger Delta. So if there's any solidarity uh, pitch, like a say speech, they should be able to do that, working with the various stakeholders of the Niger Delta uh, uh, Assembly originally, and come out with a, with a statement, not a threat. Okay, so uh, comrade, uh, what would you say now? Now that. Communities in the Niger Delta are aggrieved, so to speak, even though the Youth Council is dissociating itself from it. What would you do now? Uh, because if they are aggrieved, they have a right to be aggrieved and say that we are going to do X, Y, Z because we feel for the person who has been detained uh, for this long. So what are you going to do now? Uh, we know that violence is out of the question because that is not acceptable anywhere. What would you do to make sure the aggrieved mm -hmm. communities are on the same page with you. All right. Um, um, of, of course, you know, this agitation of releasing Namdekano has not, did not start today. You know, they started with, uh, with this uh, street at home, you know, other in the northeast. It's a total northeast affair. And southeast, they should southeast. Have, uh, 
they, they, they should, they should, yes, we know that some communities in, in Umaya, you know, are uh, oil producing, so it is co-opted into the Niger Delta as it were. However, it does, that does not give them the right to uh, to generalize without consultation. You know, of course, if you are making such uh, such uh, uh, statements of national interests, putting the Niger Delta region in the spotlight. You know, there has to be some level of consultation, and that, has, that was not done. Uh, and of course, you, they know that uh, when you mention oil production crippling, you know, you may likely get the attention of the federal government. And, and that they are just playing play to the gallery. And for me, I believe this statement is just, is just gimmicks playing to the gallery. If they want to really play politics, they should go to the, should go to the nitty gritty of the problem. You know, uh, you know making uh, collaboration, mending bridges. You know, and not don't give me that hyper coloration. The hyper coloration at all is is quite disgusting. Uh, you know, to to us as your people, because you cannot now associate us to hyper and say we should come and uh, we should come and blow pipeline. That is not the way to go. However, our brother, our our brother and our leader, he, uh, the Tatita Security, is is started with the responsibility to you know to secure pipelines and. And, and platform as such and so coming to now threaten the job of you know of one of us it, it is totally unacceptable without you know proper consultation it is totally unacceptable so the way they should go they should stop playing by making fallacious statements i believe uh, the present uh, government the listening government they should uh, they have uh, stakeholders in the government they have uh, the likes of minister for works and they have other uh, notable uh, uh, Eastern figure, Igbo figure in the government. So they should they should rather you know negotiate and, and dialogue. I know yes, uh, incarceration of uh, Nnamdi Kanu is total total uh, social injustice. However, there are approach, uh, diplomatic approaches that they must explore. I believe they've not explored those dis uh, diplomatic in approaches enough, you know, to make uh, such assertions. So playing to the gallery is just uh, is just is just is just totally uh, is just totally wrong, and they are not making any. This as it were, to now take some communities in the Niger Delta. It does not, it does not, if you are making something of the Niger Delta, to be so cool, you know, and stakeholders in the Niger Delta now, where that means they are just making um, a noise and not making any impact. So if they want solution, they should consult and, and you know, with nitty gritty approach, with, with practical approach, you know, to seek redress. You know, for the release of Nandi Kano. Diplomatic international, uh, you know, they have, uh, they can take to international court, they can do all sorts of, uh, you know, advocacy um, rather than just uh, coming out of the blues to threaten uh, oil production and, and putting it on the Niger Delta as it will. It's totally unacceptable. They should go home and have a rethink and have a practical rethink uh, approach, practical approach, you know, to resolving these issues. And I believe they can have results rather than just playing to the gallery and making unnecessary assertions. All right, Dr. Martin. So, of course, we've already established the fact that, you know, they're using this, the crippling the oil production as a bargaining chip um, for this. But if we're looking at diplomatic actions to be taken, what ways can we ensure that, you know, Namdi Kanu is being released and not having to lose so much money as a country? Well, for me, I think uh, if, you, if you look at it very well, uh, already the Nigerian image diplomatically, we have a lot of challenges we are trying to readdress. So when we come back to the issue of Nigeria debt again, which is a very fragile issue to manage, we just don't have to go into the element of violence. The violence will not help us. That is why I'm saying uh, we are not going to go. Uh, that violence is not going to help. Even certain communities, like they say, the communities in the Nigerian Delta, my community in Cross River, Idiba, I don't think they are privy to this information. They are part of the Nigerian Delta also. So for me, looking at that type of scenario, we should be able to tell the advocates of such act that no, dialogue gives a better result and engagement, we get a better ticket to enable us go is better than crisis. We don't need to destroy our own legacy again or facility in the name of a protest. So rather, let us let them have a proper presentation that this is the case we have. Instead of buying that sympathy of violence and uh, it's not going to help us. I, I, I bought violence in any form. Dialogue, discussion, engagement can give better results. But let's not use this as a political uh, 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 coloration 
to enable and say that the people of Niger Delta have not seen advocating for Nambi Kalu. No. Yes, in terms of sensibilities and uh, senses, yes, you know, human level, but they shouldn't be on that way. There are many ways because we are talking about peace and engagement now. This is what we are talking about to move us forward. We don't have any violence. Violence should not help us any longer. Well, we were, we talking, need... we're talking about some communities. Um, they are in the Niger Delta, whether we like it or not, and they are having this grievance or they are having... Uh, this idea that they, they, should, they should talk to the government in a language that the government will understand. They are still in the Niger Delta, whether it is generally the, the entire Niger Delta that is agitating or just them. Uh, so when we say charity begins at home, you've seen that some of your brothers are worried about a particular thing which you may feel is not, um, is not global, as it were, to the entire Niger Delta nation, if, if, if I may. So what will you do about it? I'm concerned about what you will, you will say to your brothers at this point so that it doesn't escalate. Because just talking here on television is one thing, but uh, reaching out to the people who feel this grievance and want to take a drastic action is another thing. And I think it falls uh, on the lap of people who feel they are stakeholders in the Niger Delta. So comrade, I come back to you. What will you do? to douse the tension in some of these communities in the Niger Delta as a concerned stakeholder in this matter. I mean, they enjoy youth council now, not you as an individual. Okay, maybe we'll come back to you, uh, Dr. Martins, if you have something, something to say, because um, like you said, you are from Cross River, Ediba in Cross River, which is almost a, a volatile place as well because it's very close to a Bonny state and there are skirmishes here and there, Abi local government and all that. But Niger Delta communities, if it were Abi, for instance, that is, uh, that is aggrieved and they want to carry out this, we would expect some brothers of Abi to say one or two things to you. So what would you say to those communities? How would you help to douse the tension within those communities so that they don't escalate this. Because if they want to do it, for instance, if a pipeline is passing through their community and they decide to uh, blow it up, God forbid that that happens. But they can still do it if you don't take proactive steps. So what are some of these proactive steps that other stakeholders in the South, uh, South, South should take to make sure these communities come to the table? Well, for me, for me, I think discussion still remember, dialogue still remains the best in the absence of any other thing. Violence can never give you a good result. So from if there's any sensibility and there's a reason for this type of engagement, if the, the stakeholder, the elders, the traditional council, the, politi the political leaders, the, the influencers in the community say, fine, there's need for us to look at this agenda. It should be a collective thing. It shouldn't be where we can answer that, but I still believe that violence is not the best in any form of agitations. There should be a peaceful means of achieving result. Because I, I believe that when we engage people, we talk with people, with dialogue, there's still a sensibility because violence destroys. And once you destroy, it takes you time to go, you cannot rebuild the same legacy again. So engaging all that communities therein as related, uh, in a quiet boom or whatever, is a different method but as far as i'm concerned i believe that violence is out of it it shouldn't be it shouldn't be and it will never be well, has comrade joined us now comrade can you hear us now yes uh, do I you have you do you have any plan of engaging these communities that seem to be aggrieved as a body a stakeholder in uh, the niger delta of course um, it is their uh, uh, it is their prerogative to reach out to us However, when, uh, when illegality becomes legal, violence becomes a means of express, expressing grievances. So I believe what they are trying to do is to express that displeasure. Of course, the court has given orders, and the, those court orders have been reflected by the federal government. And they are, they are worried and agitated. So of course, the best language that the federal government understands at this way is violence. That's why they are now trying to take up violence. However, in their approach to seeking redress in the streets, using the street mechanism, you know, of course, there should be some level of, uh, of, of 
of, uh, of reaching out to uh, stakeholders. Say, ah, this marginalization, what do you think? We are tired of this and we want to seek redress. Of course, we want to take laws into our hands. And that kind of negotiations and that kind of discussions can now say, okay, let us come to the round table. And We're having issues with Comrade Bedford's um, audio there. But anyways, um, I mean, like he said, we need to be able to just have dialogue. Comrade Bedford, can you hear us? Hmm. All right. Can, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, the network yes. is, is fluctuating. All right, um, anyways, we've just been talking about the fact that the, some Niger Delta communities have come out to say they might just cripple our production um, for the continuous detention of Namdi Kano and in seeking his release, they want to take matters into their own hands. But hopefully um, dialogue will be the case and everyone just reach an agreement that Namdi Kano can um, be released if that's what um, the federal government is deciding to do. This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Um, gentlemen, we want to say thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thanks. Great thanks. Great thank dialogue is, is, is the way to go. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right, so we're speaking with Dr. Martin Morgan. He's a public affairs analyst and comrade Bedford Berefa is the EGL Youth Council Worldwide spokesperson. And we've just been talking about, you know, the, the Niger Delta communities having to cripple the production over Namdi Kanu's continuous detention. We'll go on a short break. Up next, we'll be looking at Men's Health Month and understanding the importance of health checks for men. Please stay with us. <laughs>